Okay, so we've tightened the double track guitars to the drums. And if there were other guitar tracks here, we could also tick their, the box on their tracks to tighten them to the drums. If I'd recorded a real live bass, I could also tick the box for the bass and, and get the timing of the bass tightened to the drums as well. But I wouldn't um, tighten the solo to the drum track because I want some looseness to the playing for the solo. And the same with the vocal. I wouldn't tighten the vocal track to the drums because I want the looseness in the timing for the vocal as well. Okay. Now with the software instrument tracks that we create, such as this bass, I wouldn't tighten this to the timing of the drums because when I compose the notes for the bass, I put them right on the lines, so they're already tight. Okay. So any other audio recorded tracks for guitars or basses, we have the option if we want to also tighten those to the drum track as well, but not the solo or the vocal, right? Not generally. Okay, uh, what else can we do? Well, when we double track this second guitar, okay, we copied, we made a duplicate of this track so that the double track for the second guitar had exactly the same guitar sound. And this first guitar track, the original guitar track, I strummed the chords G, D, A minor, G, D, C. I strummed them down at the bottom of the fretboard using the traditional chord positions down at the bottom. And then when I do the double track, I play the chords in the same position down at the bottom of the fretboard. But what we could do is create a third guitar track where we play the same chords, but we play them higher up the fretboard using bar chords in a higher octave. Let's try that. Okay, so I get this um, either one of these guitar tracks because they've both got exactly the same sound on. I'll use the second one. And I select it, I go track, new track with duplicate settings, boom. And it creates a third guitar track with exactly the same guitar sound as these two tracks. Of course, I can change it afterwards. Don't worry about that. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> Play here to the beginning. And you know the procedure to record. We activate the input monitoring. Volume gets turned down. Alt-left click on the volume. And then hit record. And I'm going to record another guitar track. But this time, instead of playing G... D, A minor, G, D, C down at the bottom, like. And then. I'm going to play it up at the top with bar chords like this. Okay, in a higher octave. Okay, here we go. Monitor, alt left click on the volume, record. Space bar to stop. Now, obviously, if your song had the intro and verse slightly differently, or even if they're the same, but the chorus was different, you'd play the intro, the verse, and the chorus, and then chop up the verse, the chorus, and the intro into separate guitar bits and copy them over to the other verses and choruses. Or you could have played that double track at the higher octave all the way across the entire length of the song. But because this particular song, Heaven's Door, is the same guitar chord cycles for the intro, the verse, and the choruses all the way across, I've just recorded one eight bar cycle of that guitar at the higher octave.
zoom in on the ending when I hit rec stop there's a little bit of overspill so bring that in and snap it to the end of that uh, 8 bar intro section right click rename this um, octave guitar or octave I'll just call it octave boom there we are and because it's the same cycle in this song for all the intro verse chords they're all the same I'll just copy this across the structure of the song for every 8 bar so Alt, drag a copy off, snap it there, Alt, drag a copy, Alt, drag a copy, Alt, drag a copy, etc. Like that, let's go to the end, Alt, drag a copy, Alt, drag a copy. And now I've got this higher octave guitar. Okay. And it sounds different to the two double track guitars because it's played in a higher octave. Let's put it up a little bit louder. I'll lower its volume and bring its volume up and have a listen. So now what I'm going to do is I'll choose a different sound for it. Um, I'm going to look for some sort of tremolo type sound. I want to get a sort of shimmering tremolo. Um, blah, 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 blah. Let's have a look what we got. Um, so with these, this new octave guitar track recorded, uh, let's try, try old time tremolo, let's try that. And I want the um, smart controls open down the bottom. Okay, this has got tremolo, push the rate right up. And then lower it right down in the mix, really low. Drop its tone to be less trebly and lots of reverb. Okay, let me try this ringing tremolo. We've got Tremo Voice, let me try that one. Vibrato Verb, I'll try now. Try this old time tremolo again. Yeah, I like that one. Um, so I've got quite a bit of wobbly tremolo on it. Uh, let's try it more trebly in tone. Okay, softer in tone. Push the reverb right up so it's really nice in a deep buried back in some reverb. And lower its volume down. Let's look at the amp, open the amp, come on, here we go, what have we got, uh, what are the controls here, right, the tremolo speed is set to sync, let's increase the depth a little bit, ah, oh, wait a minute, no, this is vibrato, this isn't actually switched on on the amp, so the tremolo is coming from somewhere else, probably a pedal, so next to the amp icon here, in the smart controls for the guitar, there's the pedal 
board icon let's have a look at that ah here we are look the tremo tone let's increase the depth <laughs> Nice ringing, shimmering, tremolo -y guitar, but it's very low in the mix at the higher octave in a nice sea of reverb. Without it, with it. On the, whoa, 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 on the higher bits you really hear it cutting through so I lower the volume until it cuts through on the higher bits but it's less obvious when I drop the bar chord down to the lower A bar chord get the controls back a little bit more mid but less treble Okay, um, so there's another idea you can do. You can also experiment with when you're doing double track on guitars, don't only think about double tracking and playing in the same octave on the fretboard. You can double track or tr add a triple track, a third track of the guitar, played an octave higher up. And depending on the tone and the sound and the effect that you give it, if it's blended into the mix very subtly, it, it puts a sort of... I mean, this almost sounds like a keyboard, a hammond -y keyboard in the background. OK, so there's another idea you can do. Double or triple track and the second or third guitar, as it is in this case, can be played an octave higher up the keyboard in a different position, on the fretboard in a different position, which makes the chords that you're double tracking with sound different. That's another idea. And of course, you can also tick the box on this higher octave guitar track to adjust its groove timing, just to tighten it up to the drums as well. If I just zoom in, let's look at the playing here on this track here, look. And if I tick its box, see the, the, the timing of the playing subtly moving, just to tighten it up to the drums as well. Okay, there we go. So that's another thing you can do.